Good day, good day, good day, good day, good day. Thank you for joining me. Just in case you're joining me for the very first time, I'm your host, the one they call Brian Glaze Gibbs. And this is my platform, this is my ministry. I'm talking about the good, the bad, and the ugly. Today, I got a special guest. I got no other than my OG, L. Shabay, aka Black C. My name is L. Shabay, a law. Formerly known as, also known as Black Seed, born and raised in Brooklyn. That's where I came up from, all city, New York. When, we, when I was a snotty old kid, and used to be the man in that area, in East New York, Cypress, Pink Houses, Plaza, the land. And who would have think that me and you as grown men would be sitting down, having a heart-to-heart, -heart, intimate conversation? <laughs> the only thing that I can say is that it was something that I invested in for a long time, <laughs> you know, because since I know you, we've been gaining experiences and history with one another. So, you know, to me, it's just something that I knew that if we know each other, we're gonna know each other for the longest. And, you know, this is just something that's just fulfilling that, you know? Okay. And you know what, babe? Like I look at it and I look at the road that we travel and I sit back and I think about a lot of different things. I think about few situations that you actually saved my life. I remember right now where it's like, you know, being a young 14 years old and me and Domino, you know, we used to come up the plaza because Domino, you know, he had Sherry and me, I'm trying to get any girl I can get at the time. And you know, we used to come up the plaza. And then right now I used to have my pop, 22 nickel plate with the walnut handle. And you must be got word from somebody telling you these little dudes be coming up there acting like they grown with this pistol. So one day I remember you trapped me off in the staircase and you say, Glaze, don't make a move. And you pull at that big long 38 and you had somebody check me. I'm scared to death. I'm going to the bathroom myself right in there. And you had them check me, frisk me up and down. I didn't have nothing. And you telling me, listen, you better learn your lesson. Don't be carrying no gun. Do you remember that? Yes, sir. I remember well, beloved. Okay. Yes, and sir. even right now, you didn't get it from me that day, but you wanted to get into like a few weeks later from Domino. Uh, Kool Aid. Oh, you got it from Kool Aid. Okay, <laughs> okay. Kool -Aid. But, but I'm saying, look, you got it. You definitely. Yeah. I know you didn't get it from me. <laughs> right. So you know, and, and, and even right now, even with that being said, like you know what I'm trying to say right now is like a lot of times people ask me, like, well, he took a gun for y'all. Why y'all didn't do anything or whatever? I say because sometimes when people do things, it's a blessing in disguise. What you're looking at, you taking this before we do something stupid with it. Yes, sir. That's absolutely correct, Glaze. You know, the whole bottom line is that nobody wants to be in a community and be at a disadvantage. Mm -hmm. And more than less, you know, Linden Plaza was the, the newest project, yeah. the newest quote-unquote development. And when my mother got up there, I came from Alabama Avenue. I was born on Bristol Street in Brownsville, you know, in the uh, horse and buggy days. But, um, you know, we couldn't have, coming from the Tomahawk era and everything like that, you know, it's a thing where it's your community is your territory. Mm -hmm. And one of the main things about, like, our teachings in the 5% Nation it says, uh, like in our 20th lesson, in one of 40 lessons, if you know, it says, what is the prescribed law of Islam to the said person of that ability? And it says that the civilized is held responsible for the uncivilized. Meaning that if you have a knowledge on something and you are aware of your surroundings, you have that type of uh, experience and things like that, the first thing you think of is in a territorial mindset is you don't let no one have an advantage as you would have in your own neighborhood mm -hmm. with bringing guns and things like that up there. And one thing that I found, I took in guns away from the Young Brothers in Linden Plaza as well. Because, <laughs> yeah, because, you know, you could tell when someone is prepared and ready to do something when they're not. You know, I was just an older version of what y'all was at that time. Okay. And, you know, it was something unique about all of y'all. You know, y'all, like, Domino had a future of having cute little girls like him because, yeah. you know, he's a fly, handsome young brother. Yeah. All of y'all was some very good dresses at a young age. Y'all wore shoes at ages that some people were, well, 12, 13 people still wearing sneakers today. 
Y'all knew about hats, fedoras. Y'all knew about beavers. Y'all wore suede shoes. Y'all had quarter fills and everything else like everyone else. So, you know, I couldn't just sit back and see just little young brothers run themselves ragged and go through the things that we had went through years before y'all have. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it was just something that uh, was a rite of passage. And I went through it as well. I had guns taken from me as well when I was young. Okay. You and know? see, a lot of us don't even understand that or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. What I mean they don't understand is this, man. Like, our relationship, our bond. Because like I told you, mm -hmm. I didn't even know how old like the different was i just know when you came around and when we had cypress versus plaza and those guys that are our age used to hang up your guys you made them powerful because they was nothing without you and you know how i look at it right now is i can remember even as time go on like you used to come through and everybody know you was coming and it's like right now only them hearing like i think i got a clean getaway running to the building running inside before you can even see me it seemed like you still coming down sudden before you turn that corner it's like please I see you. I'm like, oh, man. And I had to come right back to you. I used to hate that, man. And you used to just, like, beat us up with your words, man. Well, that's the way it had to be with y'all, Glaze. Y'all was smart, you know? I wouldn't even consider y'all all con men <laughs> because of the simple fact that Tut's mother, your mother, they warrant respect. I, lo I love them both, you know? And... You know, for y'all to have been the way that y'all had to be, and I went through the same road y'all have, I just wanted to always be able to talk to y'all directly. I always wanted y'all to be able to know that I was someone that's speaking something that's directly correlative to the things that you was going through at the time. Don't give you no sap rap. Just talk to you about the things that y'all was going through because Y'all had to find a way to get money at a young age just the same way we did. And uh, I have to say, you know, with me having a chip on my shoulders and things like that, Glaze, you know, I always tried to preserve the little brothers that had the good mother, the good father, and stuff like that because I, was, I, I never had a chance to really be a little guy, okay. so to speak, you know. Even with that being said, when you talk about that chip on your shoulder, it right now is like to me, as I sat back and thought about it, I didn't look at me as having a chip on my shoulder. I look at me as having a death wish and didn't even know it. Because I look at all the things that I got so deeply involved in. When you start taking control or having say so or who live and who die, I'm not God. So what I'm saying is, is your chip on your shoulder is similar to my equipment to the death wish and we don't even know it? Well, actually it was the same exact circumstances when I came home in 84 and decided that I wasn't going back no more and haven't gone back wow yeah since 1984 that's congratulations that's, brother yeah, that's brother. that's, that's you right. kidding me 84 1984 when y'all saw me I even I think uh I think when I came home me and even Kool-Aid walked up going up the plaza to see Skip because mm, okay. you know Skip was a uh, Cypress kind of guy yeah, exactly, too, you exactly. know, although he lived in Linden Plaza, my little man, you know, and um, we had, a, you know, we did a lot of talking because, you know, uh, Cool was looking like that. I'm walking with the M. Shabay who took my gun <laughs> when I was young and stuff like that. But it's like when we was talking and I was, and I was saying to him, you know, to see y'all being able to still be here today yeah. and we're walking together and I'm walking with that generation of y'all. You know, and you know, and the comfort that you know that you could feel and experience knowing that you have an OG. It's like saying, I got a big brother. Yeah. And that's what was always so important. And so for you, Tut, Lil Rick, OJ, and JB, and everybody else, Head, remember when they named him Head, in, right at the end, Rick's house. But you know, um, it was just a thing where I wanted to make sure that y'all had an OG over you that would also be there for you. And I can say that I've always been there for all of y'all since the time I knew y'all. And you know what, man? I got a little emotional when you start talking about that time frame, 84. And right now, we lost Domino in 1983. 
-hmm. And I can remember getting that news in 1983 when we lost Domino. Mm -hmm. And here it is, man. You talk about I was in Fishko at the time. In mm -hmm. April 1983, when I heard Curtis Domino Kibbs was shot and murdered, mm -hmm. I'm talking about right now, bro. Like, it was nothing that, you know, I could have done enough about it. It was nothing. And right. like you say, you didn't come home until 84. Right. And even when I came home, man, I always wanted to take revenge. I always wanted to go after the people that I felt was responsible for. For a long period of time, I thought Jamaican Chris had something to do with him out of jealousy, and he set Domino up to get killed. Wow. And I wanted to get him. Mm -hmm. And you know who stopped me from getting him? Exactly. Somebody from the A-team. Somebody at the A-team, and the A-team and Chris and them used to go at it. <laughs> and, you, and you know what they told me? I told him, I'm going to get this guy. Mm -hmm. I know he set my man up to get killed. Right. And the dude, the leader, one of the leader at the time, he said, yo, that didn't happen like that. And he mm -hmm. broke it down to me. Mm -hmm. And the difference is right now, he didn't have no reason to lie to me. Right. So what I'm just trying to say, even as you sit back and think about it, like once again, don't get me wrong, Domino and them, they little, you know, a year or two older than me, right. but they make no difference. Right. His last name was Gibbs, my last name was Gibbs. We right. was not brothers, right. but I felt yeah. like we was brothers. No I boy. felt when he died, I felt that pain. No and, it, and, 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 and it didn't matter, man. Like right. I said right now is, and I just sit back and think about it. Even when you say you got out in 84, you never went back, and you woke with my brother, y'all go in the plaza, I'm just reminiscing, man, because I was yeah. still in jail. I didn't come home right. until the end of 84, man. Right. So it's just like, you know, the memories that you just sit back and think about it, like, wow, man, how many years ago? Yes. And you know, it seemed like yesterday to me. You know, they say time flies when you're having fun. You know, I think that even with sh uh, the shortcomings and the things that I experience, I know that what's important to realize is that I'm still here. Mm -hmm. And it's not a puzzle when you can weigh and judge things accordingly. You know, when you can't weigh and judge things accordingly, you're usually stuck into your own maze. And it could be a maze that you produce and you can't find your way out because you lose yourself every time you represent yourself. If you take one step, you don't forgot where you done came from. And that's usually what we do. But why, brother? I, I'm, I'm just curious, man, because you the OG. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You came before me. Why do we keep losing ourselves? How do we stop that? How do we stop that epidemic from continue to happen? Yeah, and you know, that's, that's such a crazy thing. And most people don't know how to relate when situations like that come about. Because, you know, like when people don't believe that other people create circumstances upon which you would go through the same scenario by what they would be contemplating and thinking about for you to go through. So, like, you just recently heard from the George of Floyd's uh, protests and everything like that, you know. They were saying, like, uh, defund the police. And when they were saying defund the police, the, po the, the, crime, the crime level got so high, brother. And the crime level got so high because you need crime to need police. That's what some people will assume. You were saying, where all these guns came from all of a sudden? But just like, you know, when, with the way that people are trying to put you in a trick bag of, you know, yeah, y'all don't know about Glaze, and y'all don't know what Glaze deal with. See, that foolish talk, because usually when people want you to be on attention on somebody across the street, that's because they got something they're going to stab you in the back with on your side. So, you know, they create divergencies. And that's what happened in today. You know, the brothers with the guns, we think we need the guns. I got a phobe, I got something, it's something about guns that I know I'm weak on. And I'll be honest with you. Because I ain't got to hear your mouth and I don't got to be bothered with you no more if I finish you off just like that. Wow. And it's a deep thing to have to be that way and we'll come up like that. Y'all haven't come up with when, if you was just a natural born killer, you know, the mob would be like, we need that young guy there. But they taught you how to be a ghost. Now, you know, we're killing our best friends right in the same lobby. You know, I, I ate your mother's food, but I kill you in the same lobby or the same building that we both go out at the same door and things like that. So we're just following scenarios. We're so tough, but we only kill our neighbors. 
You see? <laughs> look, look what you say, man. And even right now, that's kind of deep, man. And I'm listening to your words. And that's what I was saying. Like, even when that George Floyd verdict came along and everybody was so excited and so grateful when that cop, you know, was found guilty or right. whatever. And right now, is it was like, to me, as I'm looking at it, here it is, we cheering that on. But yet and still, for hundreds of years, we've been doing that to each other. We've been our own worst enemy. We've been putting our own knee our own foot on our own neck. Right. And even when you start sitting back talking about gun, the factionation about guns. Mm -hmm. I love a gun. I didn't even know why. Right. I used to sell guns. I used to go out of town from Brooklyn to South Carolina and North Carolina, Virginia, go to these pawn shops and buy guns to resell them. And what were you doing? Yes. We in, you were bringing body harm. Right. We destroying our own community, not just with the drugs, but with the guns. Yes, All sir. for what? Because of that mighty green stuff, the dollar? I was so in love with the street. I was so in love with that 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 dollar mm -hmm. that I betrayed my people. Like you say, we come in the whole same lobby. That's right. And then right now, like I said, I sit back and think about as you say that, I was responsible for Amar death. And mm -hmm. do you know how I feel? Right now I got back from down south and I cried, boo hoo hoo. You know, because I gave the order for Amar to get killed. And right now is you order it in less than 12 hours, somebody is gone. Who am I to say who live and who die? I'm not God, babe. That's right. But you know, That's you right. come from being a you know, kid, and then you get something, a power structure, then you realize that's not what you really want. That's right, brother. That's absolutely correct. And one of the things that we just have to realize is that we fall victim to the trap all the time. See, we watch how the greater part of society treats us. And we take on that same feeling towards ourselves, you know. If if the poll, if, if if there's certain type of cops, like you remember Jack and all yeah, of them, and Jack, Big mm -hmm. yeah, and all of them. Now it was a couple of others, you know. It's been so long that you know. Hicks and Hines. You know, yeah. Oh, um, I think they was a little bit different because they didn't like us, <laughs> you know. But now that they're not cops, they do, and I understand why it's going on. Because one thing I always respect was that when I was the bad guy, I never hated a cop because he was doing his job on me. Because I was only hurting my own people, yeah. you know? And the cases that I've had, and you, you know, like a lot of my history, you know, I'd have to be honest with you. You know, I shouldn't even be proud, and I'm not proud, and I never talk much about my past. You don't. You know, I don't bring that up to people or my boxing team or anybody. I don't bring that kind of stuff up because of the simple fact that you're a young brother. Why do you have to hear, like, I went to jail? Like, that's a rite of passage. A jail is, is for losers. We have to realize that. That's for losers. When I didn't want to be no loser no more, I stopped going to jail. Wow. And instead of propagating anything, I put it into activation because I never liked it a bully and that's why people from Plaza was always good. Yeah. The parents didn't like me. Think about it. Yeah. The management wouldn't accept my mother's rent so I didn't have to come around. Wow. So they didn't want her to be out there. And then, what did I do? I, gave, I made everybody, Muslims and five percenters out there. Young kids. That's what they hated me for. You go one on one with one punch row. How did that came about, man? Well, originally, he was always trying to spar people that he knew he could take advantage of. I've been in martial arts for over fifty-seven, going on fifty-eight years. Okay, I was one of the youngest black belts, you know, and things like that, you know. Um, I, I. That was the first teacher of martial arts in Pink House and Center wow. back in 1970. But I know that I was public enemy number one in New York. And I know that, and a lot of people would be like, well, I never heard of him. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Allah. You know, because that's the last thing I want people to be able to see me by.